Hi everyone and welcome to the first video of the Biochem playlist at ChemTalk. And for this first video, I'd like to go over the four major biological macromolecules and how their structure, function, and origin all play a role in the many mechanisms in the human body. So let's go over the origin first. And let's ask the question, where do they come from? So they come from your diet. So a lot of the things you eat in the morning, in the lunch, any snacks you eat, anything you eat for dinner, dessert, all these things have different um, macromolecules that are going to be broken down in your body and then reused. So one possibility or one thing that these macromolecules are used for is your appearance. So your skin, your hair, your muscle growth, your skin color, all these things that people kind of look for when they look for body appearance are all kind of governed by these things that you get from your diet, um, like proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, etc. You know, you hear a lot of people talk about different diets that go on. It's to cut out certain things so they can change their appearance. And so that's why these macromolecules are so important to how you look. More importantly also is how they kind of operate in your body. And so in this case, it's important to know how things are, are kind of broken down on the cellular level. So fighting a disease essentially is done by these macromolecules. Um, transport is done by macromolecules. Um, the cellular membrane is made up by macromolecules. Even your genetic material, which makes each person kind of unique and different, these are all made up by different macromolecules uh, that are kind of interlinked in a lot of different pathways and mechanisms so they can work together to make sure your body's functioning correctly. And so in this case, um, these four macromolecules are carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. And I think I like to start off with carbohydrates because they are the easiest to understand, I believe. And they're also the most important because not only are they by themselves a very important molecule, but they also have their roles in other macromolecules and the more complex structures they make. And so it's important to know what they are now so you can understand them later when I draw them out in the other structures. So yeah, let's go to carbohydrates first. Hey everyone, in today's video, I like to go over carbohydrates, um, maybe just more of an intro to carbohydrates and their structure. So we'll be going over um, aldo carbohydrates, keto carbohydrates, monosaccharides, disaccharides, polysaccharides, um, their function in our body. So um, obviously their structure, um, um, how they formulate structure, obviously, identity, energy, etc. And then obviously where we get it from, from our body. So um, like how do we get carbohydrates into our body? Um, and then how do they, how are they incorporated into a lot of our different things? So yeah, let's go on with our lesson. Carbohydrates play a huge role in how we determine um, kind of sources of energy and structural properties in our body. And so a really important thing to understand is that most carbohydrates, when they're drawn, are drawn in these structures called like Fischer projections. Now, they're called Fischer projections because obviously they kind of look like a fishbone, right? Like the, the cross sections, they all kind of look like when you, when you have like a fishbone, it kind of looks like this kind of cross section with a lot of horizontal lines in between it. Also, it's a lot easier to understand because it's a very flat and, and easy to see kind of interface for all the molecules. So it's kind of important. I kind of labeled out two important things to realize in these molecules. So um, I actually like to start off by saying that these things are actually called monosaccharides. So this is a monosaccharide. So this is just means kind of the mono part means one sugar. Sorry, mono means one. And then the saccharide part means sugar. So this essentially means one sugar. And in this case, um, it's good to see how these two different monosaccharides that I've drawn out are different. Now, one thing to note before I go any further is that I kind of struggle it, but these kind of inter intersections between these kind of this, like you can imagine the spine of the fish and each kind of bridging horizontal bone is a carbon. So each circle here that I've drawn, one, two, three, four, five, and then right here, obviously six, these are all different carbons. And we just don't draw them in because it's easier to just kind of have it as a cross. So you don't have to draw a carbon each time and just to know that they're carbons. So whenever anyone draws a Fischer projection, you know that that's what they're aiming for when you see a cross like that. 
Now, another thing to note, or the second thing to note, I guess, is um, what are these things I've drawn here? Well, these things are functional groups in, in the carbohydrates, and these are the two main functional groups that you see in carbohydrates. And this one right here, this one's called an aldehyde. So aldehyde, and it looks something like this, where you have a double bonded O to a, to a carbon, connected to another carbon potentially, and then you have a free floating, or not free floating, but you have an H connected to that carbon. Uh, we call it the carbonyl carbon. Now this one right here is a little different, right? You can see that it's, it's, it's bonded to two crosses instead of an H. And so this one we call a ketone. So you kind of see in the name here, ket, ketose, so ketone, ketone. And this one has two, two carbons connected to one carbonyl. And that makes it different because it changes the react or the reactivity of these um, of these carbohydrates, and so um, it's important to know that actually the aldehyde is the more important one. So aldehyde is more reactive, and you see this happen a lot more. Um, you'll see it right now when I explain it. But essentially, what happens is since the aldehyde is very reactive, and um, you don't really see most sugars in linear form, you have this oxygen kind of attached here and you have some rearrangement and then yada, 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 you eventually have something like this. This is called the ring form of a, of a, um, of a, of a sugar, but it's more te technically known as the Hayworth projection of a sugar, of a carbohydrate. And you can see here that I've labeled it as an alpha glucose. Now in the original part, I didn't have an alpha here. Now the reason why we have an alpha here is because this carbon right here, which is the alpha carbon, which would have been the aldehyde carbonyl carbon, actually can flip. So if you can imagine it's racemic, which means there's a 50-50 chance it can be on top. So it can be one here, or it can be on the bottom, which I've labeled as alpha, right? And so actually, if it's on the bottom, it's called a beta glucose. Oh, sorry, if it's on top. So if it's on top, it's called a beta glucose. So you can imagine OH on the top, it's a beta glucose. And if it's alpha glucose, the OH is on the bottom. All these other ones right here. So all these other ones right here. These are all determined by other factors. Um, basically the orientation, if it's right or left, it, it's just dependent on top or bottom. So you can kind of match them and see which ones are top or bottom based on how they kind of are portrayed in this um, ring structure right here. But Generally, the only thing that can flip is the an anomeric carbon, which is circled right here, and there can only be two alpha or beta glucose. Now, it's important to know that most of the time, your sugars or carbohydrates aren't actually placed in these kind of single form, like free floating rings, like just one sugar at a time. They're usually bound as two. So dye this time means two saccharides making meaning sugar again so two sugars and how these bonds work or how these things are connected are, are, are through something called glycosidic bonds so glycosidic bonds and what happens is you have an oh of one ring so i'll just call this ring one you can imagine this right here is what i'm talking about so this is the oh i'm talking about like for example one oh and we have another OH of another of another ring, right? Of another sugar. And that also has an OH right here, right? And they react. And they kind of have a hydrolysis reaction where water kind of leaves from the system. And you form a new bond. You form an ester bond between these two. It looks something like this. So you have a new bond here plus H2O, which has just left. And so this is a formation of a disaccharide where basically two rings have formed between uh, two sugars. Or sorry, not two rings, but... To, uh, like one bond has formed between two rings. And this helps kind of make it so that you can easily store these carbohydrates in a much more stackable, complex form. Now, to go beyond that, uh, you, you have things in, in, in plants and vegetables that you obviously need to stack thousands and thousands of carbohydrates because they, they form so many. And so we have something called polysaccharides, which means these things can be much more than just two. They can be a thousand, uh, 10,000, et cetera, et cetera, much, much more. And these are all still bridged together by 
glycosidic bonds, but you can just imagine it would look something like ring, 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 yada, 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 yada. And it just keeps on kind of um, like bridging together with glycosidic bonds. So these are the three main types of carbohydrates, their forms, how they're kind of formulated together. I think the most important is monosaccharide, just understanding um, the different functional groups, um, this projection, how to kind of understand where the endomeric carbon is, how it's attacked. Um, obviously, being aldehyde, the more reactive one usually creates the ring more, like, uh, more likely and more feasible. And um, to know that usually a six-membered and a five-membered ring are more stable because of steric purposes. So I'm going to just say six-membered to five-membered rings are more stable. And so if, if it was a six-membered ring, obviously this one here would attack. And then if it was a if it was not a six member ring, a five member ring, then this one here would attack as in, um, and when I mean attack, I mean attack the aldehyde right here, just like that. All right, so um, obviously just knowing the structure is not as important as actually knowing the function as well. So carbohydrates are a really good source of energy. So when, you, when you're like on a long hike and you feel really tired, you take out a Nature Valley bar, um, those things are chocked full of carbohydrates and they help fuel you for the rest of the hike because the energy is really fast. It just, it gets burned really fast and you get the energy really quickly. Another component is the structural component for lipids. And I'll go into more detail when we go to cover the lipid section. Um, and finally, it's also an identifier molecule for proteins and cellular membrane. And so I'll kind of cover over that when I go to protein and cellular membrane as well. Okay, so obviously with that being said, it's good to know the practice problem uh, kind of encompasses a very easy summary of what we just learned. So maybe pause the video and just quickly answer these real quick. Okay, so I'm assuming you finish the, you pause and you kind of finish the question. So let's go over it together one time. So here we have a question, is this monosaccharide a ketose or an aldose? Well, aldose obviously derived by aldehyde this right here is an aldehyde. And so we can just say this is an aldose. Aldehyde based. And obviously, this right here, what is the anomeric carbon on the sugar? As I said before, it is the carbon being attacked, which in this case would be the carbon attached to the double bonded O. So in this case, it would be like dot, 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 dot. You can imagine this is like this is the rest of the fish bone. This is the carbon being attacked. That's the anomeric carbon. Okay, I hope that helped on carbohydrates. Um, and if you have any more questions, I can maybe go into a more detailed video about carbohydrates, how to read Fisher better, um, and different ways you can you can read um, you can like deduce a Fisher projection from a Hayworth projection and vice versa. Um, but I hope this helped give you kind of a brief introduction about carbohydrates. And then next up will be proteins. And as always, thank you guys for watching this video. Please check out our other videos at ChemTalk. We go over Gen Chem, organic chemistry, and biochem, of course. So please check out your other videos if you guys ever need help on any of those topics. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Thank you. Bye-bye.